Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today I'm going to be going over how to add and apply damage uh, to objects in your game f with the current, you know, kind of setup that we have for attacking things. So, if you guys recall, in some of the previous videos, we kind of have this sort of combo system thing going. Um, if I pick up a weapon, right, I can equip it, and then if I attack, right, I kind of have these combo moves that I can do. So we'll look at, you know, applying damage uh, from those attacks. Okay, so um, this is going to be kind of a basic way to do things, uh, or not really basic, I guess, but more general way of doing things. Um, there's a lot more that you can expand upon and just add more functionality based on your needs. Uh, but with that, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our interactables folder here and go into our weapons and open up the base weapon. Okay. So right now in the event graph we don't have anything set up, uh, but let's fix that. So we're going to delete these bottom two nodes here because we still need the event begin play. And basically what we're going to do is on event begin play, um, we're going to cast to our character, so my character, um, and we're going to get the player character. Okay, and then we're going to right click on this as my character, promote it to a variable, and we'll call it character reference. Okay. Now the reason for this is just it'll help, it'll make things easier um, for this next part that we'll do. Um, we won't have to cast every time that the event we're about to make will be, you know, called. So um, what we're going to do next is we're going to right click, add a custom event. I'm going to call this just simply attack. Okay. And in this event, what we want to do is, you know, basically execute all of our, you know, kind of attacking functionality. So we're going to do a line trace to see if we hit something. If we hit something, then we'll play some effects and then we'll apply damage to it. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll take our weapon info here and we'll drag it out and we'll say get. Okay. So we'll get it. And then we can right click on it and split the struct pin and that'll give us all the variables that we have. Okay. So next what we're going to do is we're going to drag off of attack, or drag out, and we're going to do a what's called a multi um, sphere trace uh, by channel. Okay. Now what this will allow us to do is get hit results from multiple things, right? So if you you know say you're slashing your sword and it kind of hits more than one you know person or you know actor or whatever, um, you'll be able to apply damage to multiple multiple things. Um, so if you don't want to do that, you can just do like a single sphere trace or a line trace or whatever. Um, but that's this is just what we're going to use. So uh, what we want to do next is we are going to, um, well, we need to start in end location. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to get our character reference here, say get. And we want to get um, the actor location. Okay. And we're going to use this actor location as the starting location for our sphere trace. Then we also want to say get forward vector, so we'll get the actor forward vector. Okay, we're going to take this value and multiply it by a float, and that float is going to be our weapon range. Okay, so we'll take our range here, plug it in. Okay, then we just need to say vector plus vector, and add on this you know ending point to the start location, so that we have our end location. Okay. Then I'm just going to define kind of a you know a variable here for the area of like maybe uh, 25. Okay, that'll just be the radius of the the sphere, and you'll be able to see that later. Okay, next let's go ahead and we're going to change the visibility here to uh, or the trace channel to camera because camera or everything blocks camera. Um, then I'm going to change the debug type to for duration just so that we can see it um, in your actual game. Make sure that that's off. Okay, then for actors to ignore. I'm going to drag this out and I'm going to say make array. Okay, and we're going to use our character reference for that. Okay, so we're going to make sure that we ignore um, the character as well as, you know, our the, the weapon itself. So it'll do both of those. All right, next what we want to do is, well, we want to do a branch off of the return value here because we want to check if we hit something or not. All right, um, and then if we hit something, okay, we're going to take this out hits and we're going to do a for each loop. Okay, then we'll take true, connect it to the execute, and there we go. So, um, what this is going to do is for each thing that it hits, we're going to do something with it. So we'll take the array element here. It's um, an array, you know, of hit results. So we can drag off and say break hit result. 
Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add our, you know, our effects and then the damage. Okay. So inside the loop body, we're going to drag out and say spawn emitter at location. Okay, so this will be our, you know, our weapons uh, visual effects. Then we'll do a play sound at location. Okay, and that'll be the sound of, you know, whatever we hit, or rather the sound of our hit uh, sound effects um, that we have in the weapon info. Okay, and then finally we'll say, you know, apply damage. Okay. So what we're gonna do is um, we're going to take the location of the hit result and we'll plug that into both of the, lo the locations here so that we know where to play the sound. Um, then we're going to take our hit actor here and plug this into damage actor. Okay, for damage causer, okay, we're going to use our character reference for that. Okay, even though it's technically the um, the weapon that's you know using this event, it's going to be whatever you know your character is. Okay. And then um, next we need to just plug in the variables for you know our emitters to play or our particle systems, um, our sound, and our damage. So what we'll do is we'll take our weapon info. We will get it. Okay, I'm going to drag off and I'm going to say break weapon info. And then we'll just untick everything that we don't need. Um, so the only things we need are going to be the hit VFX, hit sound effects, and damage. Okay. So we'll move this back a little bit, and basically we'll just take the hit VFX, plug this in, take the hit sound effects, SFX, plug that into sound, and then we'll take the damage and plug that into damage. And so that's all the setup that you really need to do here. Um, one thing I want to point out is just to make sure that on all of your weapons that you have these variables set, um, because otherwise, you know, it's not going to play anything. So the last thing that we need to do now is, you know, have a way to fire off this attack event okay and so what we'll do to do that um, is we're gonna use our animation um, you know our, our animation montages to kind of play um, some or do use some anim notifies to play this uh, event okay so with that let's go ahead and find our character okay I'm gonna say edit um, and we're gonna go look at our combos and this will just be an easy way to find you know the montages that we need so I'm going to hit the browse button here and that'll bring us to where we need to be. Okay. We're just going to open it up. All right. And we're going to go down to the notifies. Okay. And we're going to look for the point where he kind of does his little slash. So he does his slash right here. So at about this point is where we're going to want to, you know, kind of call this attack event. Okay. So I'm going to right click, say add new notify. I'm going to say new notify. I'm just going to call it, um, you know, just melee attack, for example, or just, I guess, attack will be fine. Okay, because we'll leave it as something generic, because we'll just be able to add this notify in any blueprint. Okay, so this will just be our attack. So we can save that. Then we'll go to the next combo, find the same point where he does his little slash. So like right there, we'll add the notify for attack. Then we'll find the last one. And right there, he does this thing. Now we're going to use the same um, attack here, uh, the same you know kind of line trace and everything. But you might want to do something different for this one because you know it's not actually. I mean, he's kind of doing this ground pound sort of thing. So you could do like you know kind of a radial damage that might be kind of cool. Um, but you know for now we'll just do the regular attack as well. So next, let's go back out to the content browser here. Let's go find our animation blueprint for our character. So inside the you know inside the mannequin animations um, folder we can find the third person anim blueprint so we'll open that and we just need to go add the anim notify so we'll right click and say um, anim uh, let's see anim notify for our attack so we'll do event anim notify attack and from here we're going to do two things. First, we need to you know do our usual cast to our character. Okay, so I'll just copy and paste that. Then we need to get our weapon. So I'm going to get the primary right hand item because um, that'll be you know kind of the slot that we have our weapon in. Um, okay, and then we need to cast to our uh, BP underscore base weapon. 
I'll just look for it here. Base weapon uh, is right there. Okay. And the reason we're doing this is because we need a way to get access to um, the blueprint so that we can call this attack event. Okay. So now that we have it, we can simply drag off and say attack, and we can call that function. All right. So I'll compile and save. And now, if everything's working, it should work the way that we want. Um, I guess the last thing is we just need to make sure that we um, set the values that we want for our weapons. Okay, so to do that, let's go to our interactables, our weapons, and I'll open up the longsword first. Okay, and in weapon info here, um, we'll change its attack type to melee. Okay, I'm going to change its damage to just some number. Um, range, I'll say 150. So this is all units, right? So 150 units into the world is how far out it'll go. Um, I'll change its hit VFX to explosion, hit sound effects to explosion, and you know that'll be fine for now. So you'd want to do that for all of your other weapons as well, but I'm just going to do it for a longsword for right now. Okay. So if we hit play, we can go open this or pick him up. So we picked up our longsword. We'll equip it. Okay, so now, moment of truth, if we, you know, swipe our weapon, it should use do our line trace. So you see, there it goes, it's going 150 units into the world, um, whatever direction that we're facing, okay? And then, whenever we hit something, it will play our hit, you know, hit effects, our hit sound, um, and also it will apply damage to things. So, if you have actors that you can apply damage to, you know, that this is the way that you can do it. And so there you go. There you have it. Um, there's how to add damage to things. Um, I hope you guys have found this helpful. Uh, if you want to know more about applying damage to things, please let me know and I'll you know, do some more tutorials on it. Um, but with that, thanks for watching, guys, um, and I will see you in the next one.